Hello there and welcome to The UK Decides, our special coverage of the UK general election right here on Al Arabiya English. Now, today, Thursday in the UK, is the day polling booths have been open for the British public to go and vote for who they want to be the leader of the United Kingdom heading into the future. For that reason, we won't be focusing on domestic politics as much in today's coverage, but talking more about the UK's partnership with countries around the world, an international focus, if you like, and how elections like the UK's has an impact on geopolitical events. Starting things off, we will, of course, be looking at the conflict in Gaza. I'm pleased to say joining me in the studio to discuss this in more detail is the Palestinian ambassador to the UK, Hossam Zomlot. Great to see you. Thank you very much for making time for us. Um, we have gathered you here in the week of the UK election as we host this special coverage to get your impression, not only to give us the insight of what's happening in Gaza currently, but to get your impression of the role that Britain plays when it comes to supporting Gaza. Of course, we've got the general election happening here on Thursday. The current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, for the last nine months, has spoken about being shocked by the bloodshed in Gaza, but also talked about Israel's right to defend itself. How do you, what do you make of his handling of the situation? First of all, uh, first of all, Rosanna, it's very important uh, to stress our strategy that Palestine is not a partisan issue. It isn't uh, a party issue. Palestine should be a UK issue, an international issue, because it is an issue of human rights, it's an issue of international law, and it's an issue of uh, people's inalienable rights uh, that are not up for discussion. Um, so uh, wh whoever comes uh, in government, whoever forms the next government, uh, uh, is expected to make sure that the UK long-held policy, the UK commitment to international law, and the UK historic legal and political and moral responsibilities towards the Palestinian people since the Balfour Declaration and that colonial era that uh, has seen the UK, Great Britain at the time, okay. contributing to the agony of the Palestinian people. This is a moment when we want to see leadership a true leadership that to focus on the root cause uh, uh, of uh, the situation, not dance around it, uh, not mince the words. And that requires true leadership. Whoever comes in government next uh, is expected to uh, really uh, be uh, uh, at the level of the British people. And you've seen the British people over the last few months. I mean, the level of solidarity, the intensity, the unity, the diversity. Uh, they need to listen to their own people. And I'm sure you've followed some of the opinion polls, an opinion poll after another. The overwhelming majority of the British people are with an immediate and permanent ceasefire. Any government must listen and adhere to their own people if they are a democratic uh, government. Uh, the vast majority of the British people want to see arms embargo being imposed while the International Court of Justice is looking at the case of genocide committed by Israel, brought by South uh, Africa, uh, the issue of uh, uh, making sure that international law is applied um, equally, accountability, the settlement expansion in the West Bank, the settler violence and terrorism, they are in the rampage all over the West Bank. It's the deadliest year in the West Bank so far, 20, 20, 23, 20, 24. So this isn't about a particular party or a particular prime minister or a particular government. This is about the UK. And Palestine is a cross-party issue and should be a United Kingdom issue rather than uh, 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 a, a certain part. However, having said all that, uh, the, the, the current government, uh, uh, led by Rishi Sunak and for the last few years, uh, have not really uh, delivered what was expected from the United Kingdom. And that's what I want to pick you up on, because we've listed a lot there of factors that will come into play in this election, depending on who is elected, how they handle things. But Britain does have a role when it comes to Palestine and Palestinian Palestine. people. You've already mentioned the Balfour Declaration. And we talk about Palestinian statehood as well, recognising the state and sovereignty of Palestine. So let's take those issues one by one. How close do you think, or do you think it is possible, that Britain will formally recognise a state of Palestine? Of course, and it should have happened long time ago. And Britain has missed so many opportunities, at least since 1988 when we declared the state in accordance with international legitimacy, international law, international resolutions, in accordance with the UK policy, two-state solution. Uh, uh, it missed 1999, five years since the Oslo Accords. There was uh, an agreement that the world would recognize the state of Palestine. The UK missed. In 2012, we went to the UN to seek UN membership. The UK missed. 
abstained in 2017, the century, the 100 years uh, of the Balfour Declaration. That was a moment of true historic proportions because the UK, after 100 years, Britain has seen the consequences of its Balfour Declaration. And the Balfour Declaration has cancelled the Palestinian people, has attempted to cancel. They didn't succeed to cancel. And then 100 years of Nakba, of ethnic cleansing, of occupation and subjugation, of apartheid, of besiegement, and now genocide. That was a moment after 100 years to say, oops, we have a responsibility. And our responsibility now entails that we resolve this conflict based on our international commitments that didn't happen. So today we're telling UK politicians right across the board, this is your moment. And should you miss it, then don't give us policy lines and lip service and some uh, 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 washy statements. Uh, you have got to deliver now action more than words that are, uh, are, are really needed. So the issue of re recognition is paramount because A, it corrects history, it uncancels the Palestinian people, and it does extract a clear acknowledgement by the UK that the cancellation process that has lasted for 170, 107 years has failed. But it's also an inalienable right for the Palestinian people. This is not a gift, this is not a favor by anybody. This is a sacred birth right that should have been granted long time ago. It's long overdue. Second, it levels the field. So at least we stop talking about Israel and the Palestinians, and therefore Israel interprets this as a, a license to grab more land, and you know what happened over the last 30 years. I mean, the, the illegal colonial settlements at Quadrobod, it levels the field, it becomes Israel and Palestine. Then the conversation is no longer about principles, the principle of the right to self-determination to people. This is non-negotiable. The principle that people should go back to their homes and farms and properties, this is non-negotiable. The principle of equality under the law, this is unnegotiable. But then we sit as Israel and Palestine, as two states, to discuss modalities, to discuss minor details. That's why recognition is important. And also, of all that, it really sends the right message at the right time to everybody that hope is there, that there is a different tomorrow, that we can shape a different future. And you know, and you know when you lose hope, hope, when helplessness and hopeless, hopelessness is, uh, is spreading, then this is the most worrying sign. So uh, we hope that the new government is going to recognize the state of Palestine as per their own commitment, both the conservatives, and the Labour, and by the way, and the Liberal Democrats and all the other parties have committed to recognizing the state of Palestine. But they always manage to insert a word somewhere that would delay this process. We tell them, after 30 years of delaying this process, look where you got us. You gotten us to a genocide. So this is a moment when you correct all these mistakes and a moment when you set us on a clear path because the lack of clarity over the last 30 years is what has led to this awful, horrible situation. We now need clarity. Tell me from those diplomatic conversations that you have here in the UK with the current government or with other people that are vying to get into government, how specific you are with the wording that you want to see about the Balfour Declaration. Because could you imagine a situation in which the UK formally recognises the state of Palestine, but there isn't some sort of acknowledgement of the Balfour Declaration as well? Do you need to see both happening at the same time? Yes, and we need to see an apology. The Palestinian people have been going through the most traumatic experience a nation can go through. 107 years of chronic, systematic, ongoing, non-stop attempts at erasing us. It's a process of erasure. In 1917, the Foreign Secretary of Great Britain, Colonial Britain, promised our land without consulting us and turned us the native population, at the time 98% of the population uh, owning 96% of the land and the properties, turned us into non-Jewish minorities. So all of a sudden, we are defined by what we are not. And since then, Britain took over Palestine, the mandate, and in, in, in 1920, all the way to 1948, and it was supposed to, as per its own commitment to the League of Nations at the time, to prepare the Palestinian people for statehood, to prepare the Palestinian people, you know, the colonial mindset, to prepare us for independence. Instead, what they prepared us for, the Nakba, the catastrophe, the ethnic cleansing of two thirds of our people and the destruction of more than 520 of our towns, cities, and villages, including my own parents and grandparents. That's why I was born in a refugee camp. And then 
The first attempt at, at cancellation was 1917, the Balfour Declaration, and Britain has got to take responsibility of that. They have attempted at that time to cancel a nation that has lived there all of its life, millennia. And by the way, Palestine is not just any other country. Palestine is the uh, uh, cradle of civilizations, the hub between East and West, the link, the birthplace of Christianity. I mean, this is an ancient nation. And therefore, uh, uh, that's how it started. It continued another cancellation in the Nakba and the ethnic cleansing. It continued via the military occupation of 1967 and the apartheid system and the besiegement and the walls and the killings and what have you. And now we are going through a genocide. So this is a moment when the world, including the UK, number one on the list is the UK, must come out and say enough is enough. We have to acknowledge that A, our attempts to cancelling the Palestinian people have failed have failed. We're here. Mm. We're here. Talk to me um, then about the momentum of the support for Palestine that you have seen and for Palestinians here in the UK. You mentioned it before. You feel like you've been well supported here in the United Kingdom yes. over the last nine months. Of course, it's been deeply divisive. Those supporting Israel, those supporting Palestinians in the streets, it's become a domestic and divisive issue. But do you still feel that you have that continued momentum of support from the public that could put pressure on politicians here to make a statement? Rosanna, I, I didn't see any divisive part of the solidarity in the last nine months, at least, or at, for the last many years, but it has really uh, been uh, very special, very inspiring in the last nine months. I haven't seen uh, uh, divisions. I've, I've seen unity. I've, mm. see, I've seen unity. I've seen, um, um, you know, representatives of the components of the British people. I've seen festive moods among them, and you know, this weekend you will have another one, and every weekend you have a huge national, national uh, demo. I've seen the sustainability of this, because historically, when something like this happened, usually people go out to the streets for a week, for two, for a month, but to keep going for nine months and still increasing, mm. growing, is historic in every sense. And you're talking about millions, mm. and not just in London. Just in London, in Manchester, in Scotland, in Wales, in smaller cities. In, in, I was in, uh, in Bournemouth just very recently. It just warms your heart. This small city had seen the biggest demo in support of Palestine to end the genocide in Gaza for a permanent ceasefire, all that. Uh, but also the activism, the student movement. I mean, 30 campuses in the UK now are in incumbents. And this is historic. It happens only once in a few generations' time. The last time such a thing happened was 1968, the anti-Vietnam War, and of course linked to the U.S. student movement. The labor movement here, not the labor party, the labor movement here. I mean, in the last month and a half, two months, I have literally addressed almost every single major trade union congress here. You're talking about thousands, and you're talking about a, a, a real base of the labor movement. So, no, the solidarity and all the indicators are like when the vast majority of the British people are with an immediate recognition of the state of Palestine, of course, with an immediate and permanent ceasefire, with arms embargo immediately on Israel. You're talking about 70 percent, 80 percent, 90 percent. Uh, 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 when they are with the full application of international law at the ICC and the ICJ, then you know that you have got the public opinion. The issue here, the issue here is the growing gap between those in government and their own people. And this is an issue that has to do with democracy and how democracies work. The gap is actually increasing, not decreasing. And our job, especially in light of the upcoming elections, is to reduce this gap so any government is actually representing the true uh, feelings and the true support and the true principles of its own pe people and their own values. I mean, any party, any party that would form the next government should have certain values, should have certain values. The conservatives believe in global Britain and international law. We haven't seen much of that vis-a-vis -vis Palestine. Labour believe not only in that, but in justice and, and freedom and social justice and political justice. We need to see that. So we need to work with them, not only on the basis of what we expect, but what they have promised. And we'll have to wait and see how that uh, outcome works on Friday after everyone has gone to the polling booth. But we really appreciate your time today and coming to talk to us about how this affects the situation in Gaza. Ambassador of the State of Palestine to the UK, Hussam Zomlot. Thank you.